Hi, I'm Alan Smith with the National Plasters Council and thank you for joining us today. Today we'd like to talk about a special phenomenon in a pool plastering um, called calcium nodules. The two types of calcium nodules found in many regions of the U.S. and their methods of determining their causes are fairly straightforward. Other types of nodules or other potential causes of nodule growth have been reported but are not covered in this video. So let's define the uh, two basic different types of calcium nodules that we uh, see uh, in the field that have uh, plagued the uh, pool finish industry for years. The first nodule we'll talk about, also known as delaminating or non-bonding areas. Delamination means that a gap is caused by the base of the plaster being separated from the substrate it was originally applied to. The secondary deposit that forms in the gap may or may not be calcium hydroxide. It could be entragite, calcium carbonate, gypsum, or any other number of secondary deposits that are usually salts of calcium, of which calcium hydroxide really isn't a salt by a chemist's definition, so it's a little bit different. Either way, it's being dissolved and brought to the surface. The second type of nodule is coming right out of well-bonded, or what we call intact, plaster or any other type of cementitious pool finish that was applied. The plaster is basically filled with what we call microstructure cracks or micro cracks. That is the very basic DNA of cement compounds. And when the water can get into these microstructure cracks and then starts to transform these soluble salt products to the surface is when you get your calcium nodule. Today in studio we have John Dongel, who is the research director for Pebble Technologies and the past chairman for ACI, which is American Concrete Institute Plaster Committee. Now I'd like to have John come in and weigh in on this and give some more um, details to uh, the cement hydration process and how this all comes into play. First, most cementitious products are comprised of basically three materials, a binder, an aggregate, and water. Hydraulic cements are typically made from hard rock and other mineral materials that are crushed and calcined to remove the chemically bonded water and carbon. Then the material is ground to an ultrafine powder. When we mix the cement powder with water, we are converting the material back into a rock-like hard matrix form. But when we make cementitious materials, about 50% of the mixed water we add isn't needed for the cement powder hydration reaction about 50% is water of convenience. This means that about 50% of the volume of water ultimately has to leave the system. This represents about 8 to 10% of overall volume loss based on the raw material volume that we are mixing together. Thicker materials like concrete, shotcrete, and precast are able to store this water or hold most of it within themselves. But actual shrinkage related to the volume loss after the placement of a thin layered material such as plaster or mortar, translates to a 0.2% overall loss in volume due to evaporation and absorption within just the first three hours. Fortunately, cement relieves the internal strain from shrinkage by fracturing or microcracking throughout the system. These microcracks develop in an order of one to three microcracks per millimeter, meaning in that 20-foot span of plaster, microcracks would be expected to transverse the span, each helping to offset the half inch of overall volume loss. Of course, these microcracks are not visible to the naked eye without the aid of a powerful microscope, and these cracks quickly seal themselves with ongoing cement reaction products. In other words, they pose no issue. However, about every two to four inches, larger shrinkage microcracks typically develop. These relate to what Alan was talking about earlier. These micro cracks are much wider, typically about five to 10 microns in width, and these generally take several days to several weeks to fill shut with cement hydration compounds. During this time, any aggressive water, such as low calcium, low carbonate alkalinity, or low pH, can attack these larger micro cracks that haven't fully sealed shut. This scenario can allow for the second type of nodule problem to occur, where hundreds of small calcium carbonate growths can occur on areas across the finish where open micro cracks exist. The same aggressive water that has removed the cement reaction compounds from the micro cracks can continue to leach soluble cement compounds from the interior of the plaster or what is known as the subboundary layer. 
through a process called dissolution from a solid to a soluble ion form and diffusion, transport of the soluble ions and then deposit these as a mineral salt on the surface, which creates the nodule deposit consisting mainly of the calcium carbonate. Debonded areas can lead to flexural cracks that can also lead to nodule deposits, even without aggressive water, as pool water can circulate in and out of these hollow areas and transport soluble salts that then deposit on the surface. These can often be repaired, whereas this second type of nodule formation is much harder, if not impossible, to repair. Now that we heard that water balance is a major player with this calcium nodule phenomenon, let's hear from David Hawes, National Chairman for IPSA, Independent Pool Servicemen's Association, weigh in on this subject. The, the National Plasters Council uh, teaches right out of the IPSA basic uh, training manual that was so very well done. It was written by IPSA and specifically Bob Lowry. And we teach about water chemistry and balance and how it interacts with pool surfaces. If it gets too aggressive on the saturation index as it so uh, properly teaches, it can start dissolving and pulling calcium uh, or plating calcium out on pool surfaces. And uh, we just want your opinion on weighing in, make sure that we're properly, uh, you know, diagnosing this issue and in concordance with your basic training manual. Sure. And uh, thank you for using our training manual. Uh, I think Bob Lowry says it's it's the best book that nobody knows about. So yeah. uh, we need to get that out and get that information out there. And um, a big part of our job uh, in the service industry is uh, balancing the water. And uh, the video very plainly shows what can happen when we have aggressive water uh, in a pool and uh, the ramifications of that. And so um, we're hoping that uh, the video, as uh, well as the rest of your programs, continue to help us as service technicians uh, keep the water balanced, keep it where it's supposed to be so that we can have a nice uh, swimming environment. And likewise, all your terrific education uh, IPS has put out over the years is uh, shared by our plastering association uh, as far as educating customers and other service and, and, and pool plasters themselves. In conclusion, what we've learned from this video today is that there's two basic types of calcium nodules that originate from two different sources. The first one, where you'll see multiple nodules within a pool surface, comes directly out of the plaster surface itself through micro cracks and microstructures filled with calcium hydroxide. Pool water that needs calcium to buffer it will simply pull them out of these microstructures and cracks and form little nodules on the surface. As you can see in this core sample that we're pulling out, these nodules come out of plaster that is firmly attached to the gunite substrate. There's no delamination whatsoever with these. The second type of nodule we see is the nodules being pulled out of an area where there is separation between the plaster and the gunite substrate. In this very thin structure between the plaster and the gunite, we have calcium hydroxide building up in a large reservoir so if the water can get to it, it pulls it out and develops a much larger nodule. As you can see in this core sample in this picture, as we pull it out, there is a clear separation between the plaster and the gunite, and you see a much larger nodule on top. A simple coring of the nodule will tell you the whole story, whether it's delamination or right out of the plaster. We hope this video has been educational and informative to explain the calcium nodule phenomenon.